Okay, so let's have a look at privacy preserving contact tracking. So this is used where uh, there is the possibility of an infection between Bob and Alice. So while Bob and Alice are free from infection, their privacy will be preserved and there should not be any identification of their uh, devices to each other. But when one of them becomes infected, when Bob uh, comes near uh, Alice, then Bob may get an alert on his phone to say that Alice may be infected. So the, the presentation is mainly based on the contact tracing paper produced by uh, Google and Apple. So this is one example here, uh, PEP PT, Pan-European Privacy Proximity Tracing. In this method, uh, there is some uh, uh, measurement of the distance between Bob and Alice through uh, Bluetooth uh, signal strength uh, analysis. Then Bob and Alice have an anonymized ID. The ID is uh, can be passed uh, from Alice to Bob uh, when Alice has uh, been proven to have a disease such as with COVID-19 and then when this is the case then Bob can alert a network controller that he's been in contact with Alice who has uh, proven COVID-19 and then the healthcare authority could be informed of that. There is also the other opportunity of having a, a country code as part of the identity so that a network controller would be able to contact a controller in another country to alert of a possible uh, infection. And Bluetooth is useful because it sends out advertising broadcast to the network. So each device continually sends out broadcast uh, requests onto the network with some information that they want to send. Typically, it might just be the device manufacturer and the type of device that it is so that others can possibly connect to it. So we can see here that we have our advertising data and then there is an advertising uh, address associated with that. And in this case, we can see that it's uh, the device manufacturer is Apple and, and, and so on. So if we now look at uh, what that packet looks like, there we go. So this is this is a, a, a trace that we have uh, for Bluetooth. And we can see here there are quite a few devices sending out uh, information with this advertising uh, information. So this is a polar, uh, polar device here, where in this case we have an Apple uh, device here. So these advertising uh, broadcasts can obviously be used to send uh, an identity of a user. In the privacy preserving way, we need to make sure that identity cannot be traced back to the user of the phone, but we still need to be able to uh, trace uh, whether someone is infected or not. So the method proposed by Apple and Google are, is to have three uh, different keys. There is a tracing key, a daily tr tracing key, and a, and a number of daily tracing keys, and a number of rolling pr proximity identifiers. So the tracing key is produced once, say, unless it's reset again, and that will be the key that is not released and will only be stored on the phone and will not be uh, revealed to anyone else. If anyone else gets this, then they can actually uh, spoof uh, the identity of the person. So what we have is a 256-bit uh, key that we generate, a random number generator, and that is stored uh, on the device. We then take the day uh, as derived from the number of days since the epoch, and that is added into a hashing method or key derivation method called PBKDFS2 or something else like bcrypt. This will then create a daily tracking key. 
So for each day, we'll get a new key that is that is actually a generated. If Alice is clear of uh, COVID-19, uh, this key will not be uh, uh, revealed to anyone. But if she does, then if it's if she's proven to have the disease, then a trusted entity such as a healthcare authority will have her daily tracing keys. So they will have one key for the amount of days that she uh, is proven to be positive for the disease. It, this then goes into an HMAC function. HMAC takes a hash and then uses a private key uh, to uh, produce the uh, to produce another hash which will be used as a, a, a rolling key. And this HMAC is produced every 10 minutes. So every 10 minutes we'll have a new ID. Only Trent will know how to trace back the identity to uh, Alice because uh, Trent has the daily tracing keys. So if he takes this key and the time interval, he can produce the same key that Bob will return when he's in contact uh, with Alice. So in this way, Bob cannot tell what uh, it is, what's Alice's identity because the rolling key cannot be linked back to her or her tracking, her tracing key. So we end up with multiple daily tracing keys, one a day, and then every 10 minutes we end up with a rolling a proximity identifier. If we look at the code for this, and I'll just show you the code here. So the code for this is here. Okay, so initially we create a 32 byte random number and then that then becomes our uh, uh, tracing key. So this will be stored and will not be revealed to anyone. Next, we're going to take the number of seconds since the epoch. So we'll take the number of days since the epoch. So in this case, we'll take the current time and then we'll divide by 60 times 60 divided by 24 to give us the number of days since the epoch. From there, we add on a string and then we'll create the, uh, we'll, we'll create the hash through the string that we have and then also uh, with the key. And this will give us our daily key. So this is the key that's used once a day. Now we want we want to find a new a new HMAC signature for every ten minutes. Okay, so we measure the minute seconds since midnight div divide by sixty times ten, and that will give us a ten minute blocks. This gives us what's called the time interval number. We take another string and add that onto the time interval number and then we create our HMAC signature here with those two values. If we run this, we'll see what we get. Okay, so there is our 256-bit key. Uh, we truncate this to 128 bits to make it smaller, so that's the daily key, and there is the role and ID. So as we move through 10 minutes, then uh, this key will change here and then every day this this key will change but the tracing key will stay the same we'll just try that as a little example we can see here that uh, we're updating from here Okay, so why is that secure? Well, the key scheduling method is embedded into uh, the operating system so that it's not possible to change the scheduling of the keys or how the tracking key is actually used. The rolling uh, ID keys cannot be uh, traced back to the tracking key 
because it's not possible to reverse engineer the rolling key back into the daily key and to the tracing key. And the server cannot track until the daily keys are, are released. These are called the diagnos diagnosis uh, keys. So whenever the daily, whenever uh, Alice is proven to have uh, the disease, then the daily tracing keys are sent to Trent. And these are only valid for 24 hours, after which it's not possible to trace uh, Alice from there on. So the mobile device needs to send a new daily tracing key to Trent for uh, Trent to be able to still uh, monitor, uh, detect uh, Alice's uh, contacts. So there's only a 24 hour window for that. For the rolling ID, there's only a 10 minute uh, window for the ID. But for every ID, uh, as long as uh, Trent has the daily tracing key or the diagnosis key, then he'll be able to trace back the rolling ID to uh, Alice. So when Bob sends that to, to him, so the way it should work, is like this. Okay, so let's say that uh, Alice has now been uh, proven uh, to have the disease, then her daily uh, tracing key is sent to Trent. Trent will take a log of that and we'll see different rolling keys produced every 10 minutes. Bob picks up one of those keys and passes it to Trent. Because that he has the daily tracing key, he can link back uh, that that is one of Alice's rolling ID keys. But after 24 hours, then it's not possible for him to be able to trace the uh, rolling ID key because uh, Alice will be using a new key. If she doesn't send it, then the ID that's sent back cannot be linked uh, to Alice. So when Alice is free of the disease, then uh, her device stops sending uh, the daily tracing key or the diagnosis key. Okay, so that was a quick outline of privacy preserving contact tracking.